Thanks for joining us at Ride On Replicas, where we're proud to bring you the best scale model kit reviews on the planet. This review covers the M151A2 with tow missile launcher and the M220 tracking system. It's a 135 scale Tamiya model kit number 35125 of the Ford Mutt uh, Jeep style military vehicle. There are about 126 pieces to this kit. And they're molded in tan with clear um, acetate for the window and some water slide decals. The instructions are very well laid out. Now the tow missile was actually uh, designated the BGM-71A, but it was known as a tow, which is short for a tube-launched, optically tracked, wire-guided missile system. Now the maximum range of the tow missile was 3,750 meters, which was better than the recoilless uh, rifles that were initially uh, fitted to this unit. Um, the Tamiya uh, has offered a couple of other versions of the Ford Mutt model kit as well in different liveries uh, for the um, diorama builders out there. When you're done, dimensions are 4 inches long, 2 inches wide, and 2 and a quarter inches high. Here are the contents of this kit. As you can see, all the parts came out of the box when I opened it. Some people call that an open box review, and they try to think of words to describe each piece, but that won't help you build the kit. And that's what we're here to help you do. Now, I want you to know that we'll be using mostly Model Master's liquid cement, sometimes super glue for um, fragile parts, and that you should always heed the manufacturer's safety and use guidelines when using any of the products you see or hear mentioned in the review. Here are the decals for this kit. You shouldn't run into any trouble just using some warm water to place them. But remember, they won't stick well to a vehicle or model that is has flat paint. Uh, and you may get some silvering. So you might want to uh, coat your um, vehicle with some future floor polish through an airbrush or, or even some clear paint uh, with a little gloss to it. Now, as always, uh, you can use and supplement your um, decals with some of the aftermarket setting solutions if required for contours. Tamiya doesn't bother trying to use part names because I don't think they fully understand them but um, nonetheless uh, we're going to uh, and show you the pieces that will need to be constructed. And we start with the body and the suspension here um, and as you can see you're going to grab these parts and then assemble um, you know the sides of the frame and the suspension pieces underneath. Uh, for this assembly, um, you'll need to drill out some holes on parts A1, 2, and A34. And uh, th that's for the marine uh, version. So the fuel can posts need to be removed from A1. And part A2 then is attached to the left side and the right side. And then uh, A1 is attached to the rear. Now on the bottom of the A34 assembly, both B21s are attached in that area for the rear suspension. And B10 attached to the bottom of A34 assembly in the transmission area. Part B22 is slid into a hole on B10 and secured to post behind both a, uh, B21s and A21 then is glued to the post on the driver's side of A34 beside B10. The assembly is then spray painted with some uh, testers uh, flat olive drab. We can continue uh, after those are set with some of the forward suspension pieces. Uh, grab these parts out of the kit, stage them for construction, and then paint them flat olive drab. And then um, B27 is attached to uh, A34 body by the passenger side B21 and a bracket that's on A1. And for the marine version, remove part of B27 that will go past the bracket on A1. Now B30 is attached to A34 behind uh, part number B22 and then B28 will attach to the passenger side of B30 crossing over B22 and then secured to A34. Now B29 can be attached to the driver's side of B30 crossing over B22 and secured to A34 as well. And B20 is slid into a hole on B10 and attached finally to A34 in front of B33. Now B23 
gets attached to the passenger side of B33 and B20. And B24 is attached to the driver's side of B33 and B20. And both A15s are then installed to A1. And A5 is installed to A1 between both of the A15 pieces. Locate these pieces from the kit which includes the uh, tow missile uh, launcher base. And the base and the guidance control for them are assembled here along with the radio. So the base assembly has uh, you adding both uh, C-17s and attaching that to C-4 along with C-13. The C-4 assembly is glued to C-11 and the whole assembly then can be painted uh, testers flat ol olive drab spray. Now the guidance control consists of uh, C-2 being secured to C-35. C-36 is then painted with the olive drab and C-2 also. Now that detail however gets painted some tem uh, t tester semi-gloss black and then the radio consists of C-22 which is attached to the front of C-37 and C-19 which gets attached to a section on th C-37. Now the base and the antenna section of the radio are then painted olive drab as well and so is the uh, the radio part uh, and detailed with uh, some tester semi-gloss black. Get these parts out to uh, attach them towards the front end of the model and uh, we're going to paint them uh, with the uh, olive drab then attach C28 to the passenger seat well and A6, A12 and A13 are installed onto the transmission well of uh, the body A34. Uh, these are some very small pieces so um, they need to be handled carefully and don't use a pair of bare tweezers on them because if they snap out of there uh, the carpet monster will grab them for sure. Now um, you can um, use parts A uh, parts C28, A13, and A12, and A6 and, and for this assembly and paint them uh, with the tester's olive drab. And then C28 is attached to the passenger seat well. And then um, A6, A12, and A13 are installed into the transmission well of the body. And now the base uh, subassembly can be installed into the bed, bed section of the body. And then C25 and C7 are painted with the olive drab and C25 is attached to the left interior rear fender well and the base assembly. And C7 is attached to the right interior fender well and base assembly. Now there's a decal that is applied to the right passenger side fender well there. Now get these parts out, the grill and C interior parts there. Um, and uh, we're going to paint those uh, with the flat olive drab. Once dry, install uh, A17 into the front of uh, the body and then uh, C5 is attached to A4 into the hole that was opened up in an uh, earlier step there. Now B19 painted uh, an Africa uh, khaki brown, which is a German uh, pronunciation. And then it's detailed with uh, some olive drab. B19 is attached to B18 and then the uh, assembly is installed onto the driver's side of uh, the body. C3 uh, then gets placed onto the floor of the body next to the driver's seat. The completed radio is attached to the left fender well and C25 and the guidance control box is placed on the floor between the base assembly and C3. Now we can gather up the parts for the wheels so go ahead and uh, paint those with the uh, olive drab paint and then um, assemble them uh, with the hubs inside uh, and trap that in place with the back side of the wheel. And the um, part B1 gets installed into the center of B2 with no glue. Uh, so B5 then is installed into B2 locking it into place as we mentioned. And be sure not to get glue on B1 if you want the tires to uh, rotate. So this is done for all four tires and then installed onto the vehicle using some uh, flat black or rubber color for the tires. Snap the uh, wheel assemblies on to the uh, hub spindles on the body uh, suspension. And then uh, the headlights can be painted uh, silver and then the turn signals a uh, turn signal orange or amber and the brake lights are uh, 
top light red. Locate the pieces for the uh, the dashboard wheel um, and the windshield, including the uh, the clear piece for the windshield. And there's an option you can either build it up or down, but there's a modification involved there. Now I built it with the uh, windshield down, and to do that, um, you have to uh, position the dashboard to be, uh, and then carefully cut off part A19. So A7 is attached to A19. A11 and C1 are attached to the alternate dashboard A14 for this configuration. And both A19 and A14 assemblies are spray painted olive drab. A10 gets uh, the olive drab treatment and it gets some uh, detailing with a little semi-gloss black. Then attach it to A11. The windshield gets cut out of the clear styrene sheet and it's secured to uh, A19 the windshield frame with some clear part cement or um, some white glue. Now the C6 is painted olive drab on the side that will be attached to the A19 uh, piece and chrome silver is painted onto the other side. Now C6 attached to A19 with uh, testers clear part cement or white glue uh, or any suitable glue for uh, clear pieces. Get these pieces out of the kit box and paint them olive drab once dry, both A9s are attached to the front bumper. And note that the, um, the Army version is, is if you're going to build the Army version, that the bumpers would need to be shortened. And that's uh, shown in step one of the instructions. Uh, but for, um, for this Marine version, we keep the long front bumper. Now A18 gets attached to the body, and B32 is uh, detailed with Model Master uh, Chrome Silver and then glued to the top driver side of A18. A14 piece is secured to A18 and A19 is attached to the top of A18. So if you're planning on camouflaging the vehicle, don't glue the windshield into place just yet. Uh, now it's time to um, assemble the soldier with these pieces uh, here. And there's a number of ways to approach his positioning. Uh, it, if you uh, build the um, the uh, body and arms, etc. It's um, pretty close to correct position, but you could leave off the right arm and then glue that into position on the steering wheel. Uh, I found that it was okay to go ahead and paint the model uh, and then go ahead and uh, glue him into position on the seat and move him just to a slight twist to get his hand on the steering wheel for proper positioning. So uh, go ahead and follow those steps to install your driver. We'll use these parts to assemble the tripod. And the tripod can be assembled two different ways. You can fold it up and put it in the, the uh, Ford Mutt as uh, we will be doing. Or you can set it up for uh, standing up and using for ground use. Um, so we're going to uh, all, uh, attach all three of the C8s to the three sides of C9. C10 is then attached to the top of uh, C9. and then the entire assembly gets painted with the olive drab. Now there's some decals that are applied to the three C8 pieces and C9 once the paint's dry. Tripod assembly is installed uh, onto part number um, C9 or C28 and under part number A14. The launcher part uh, C33 is attached to part C29. Now C31 can be installed onto a pin on C33 without glue. Um, C30 then gets attached to a pin on C29 also with no glue but C31 uh, is then glued into position. Uh, one of the C34 pieces is attached to a post on C31 and the other is attached to a post on C30. Now part number 35 uh, it's glued into position uh, to the launcher assembly above uh, C31 and C30 and C32 is attached to the front of C35. Next the launcher assembly is painted uh, olive drab and part C32 gets painted the testers dark blue. Um, but there's some notes on that coloration at the end of the review. Now the launcher assembly then is installed onto the base assembly. To build the tripod in the setup position Locate the template or the guide on parts tree C. Uh, do not uh, glue the C6s to the parts tree, but
but set them into the template and glue them to C9. Once the glue is dry, the tripod can be removed from the template and C10 can be attached or it can be attached before the tripod is removed from the template. Now, that choice is the builders. Now uh, get these pieces out of the kit. Those are the, uh, the missile tubes there and the end pieces along with the brackets for the uh, missiles and go ahead and spray those um, uh, Model Masters drab green, uh, olive drab and you will detail the ends of the canisters though uh, with some flat black paint and then of course the perimeters are still in the olive drab coloration. So go ahead and assemble those tubes with the end caps and then install the rack uh, and um, the uh, add the um, smaller um, piece racks there and then on your uh, missiles that were painted previously uh, add the decals the yellow striped decals and then attach those to the uh, bracket uh, on the side of the Jeep grab the uh, seat assembly backs uh, and the uh, spare tire and fuel can we're going to assemble the fuel can uh, that's parts uh, B7 uh, and B8 then on top that uh, bracket uh, B9 is attached and then the fuel can assembly can be painted to olive drab and uh, also some of the uh, insets can be detailed with a little of that Model Masters Africa khaki brown uh, before it's attached to the passenger side of the vehicle by the rear fender well. Uh, you can see it there in the next slide. And then B6 glued to B3 and that assembly is painted uh, uh, flat black and detailed with some olive drab. Now then the spare tire uh, assembly is attached to C5 in the passenger side of the vehicle and you can see where it's positioned. Now uh, part 27 gets painted with um, the khaki brown and detailed with some olive drab and it's attached to the top of the uh, passenger rear fender well. Part 26 uh, gets the same treatment that's the seat cushion and uh, of course the drab is uh, uh, used to highlight the uh, metal bracketing and C24 is painted with the khaki brown and also detailed uh, with uh, the olive drab in the same way and it's attached to the top of the uh, rear fender well on the driver's side. Now part 23 um, also uh, gets the additional khaki brown that's the other seat cushion and it's attached uh, to C24 with some uh, detailing for the drab on the metal parts. To finish up the construction phase here we're going to grab the um, the high uh, snorkel and uh, exhaust there and attach the um, those two grab handles uh, to the outside front edges of the bumpers and the bracket there in the back for the, uh, uh, the exhaust the uh, uh, tailpipe there the high pipe and uh, the snorkel now those are of course painted with the drab green and attached to the vehicle now we can add some finishing details to the completed model um, the uh, some flat black and some military brown was uh, added to uh, overlay on the on the olive drab to give uh, it uh, the marine uh, camouflage look and then the decals are applied as well the uh, uh, marine decals for this designation and then uh, the, here's a front and rear view of the completed kit as you can see uh, it's a pretty interesting looking piece and after the the decals were dried uh, I used um, some of the uh, Tamiya uh, Weathering Master set A sand and light sand uh, to dust the kit and uh, give it uh, a good appearance of a um, uh, road weary battle scarred or used uh, military mutt. Well there you have it. I've shown uh, here a previous uh, army version with the windshield up that I did uh, prior so that you can see uh, there is a distinct difference between the marine version which uh, is this build but uh, it's a great kit uh, it's incredibly well uh, detailed and it has quite a few parts for a 135 uh, scale piece um, so it goes together well everything fits properly there's just light flash on a few pieces there's a few seams and some of the tubes that you might want to finish off for a contest model but by and large this is a great model so if I were you I'd buy one and put it on my shelf we hope you like this premium scale model kit review from right on replicas and you can always find us uh, on Facebook or at our website www.rightonreplicas.com but 
If you don't want to miss any more of these great reviews, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks.